Good evening and a warm welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening on Health Digest where we discuss issues to do with health with me, Dr. Masi Korir. And today we are looking at maternal health and child health. And we know that Kenya is among countries where women have a high chance of dying due to pregnancy-related complications. Now, the Kenya Health Kenya Demographic and Health Survey put this number at 362 deaths per 100,000 live births. This is the KDHS 2014, and this was a seven-year survey, seven-year period prior to the survey. Now, half the number of pregnant women do not attend the recommended minimum of seven or four antenatal clinic visits, and we still know that women deliver at home. Now, the free maternity services introduced by the national government in 2013 was meant to address this issues by bridging the financial gap that stopped many women from accessing or going for maternity related services. Now this has been transitioned to Linda Mama, which is the focus of our discussion tonight. And with me in studio is Fardosa Abdi. Fardosa is the manager programs and schemes at NHIF. Also with me is Dr. Frazier Karua, who is the general manager AMREF Enterprises. Now, before we start this discussion with the two ladies uh, in studio, let's listen in to Dr. Patrick Musioki, who's the chief officer for health in Makwini County, and what he had to say about this transition from free maternity services to the Linda Mama program by NHIF. Let's take We have continued to give very quality service to our mothers uh, who come to deliver. But unfortunately, that transition from the free maternity health care program, which was being run by the National Ministry of Health, to the Linda Mama program, uh, we feel has not been done well. Because so far, the mothers that we have attended to and they've delivered in our facilities, uh, we have not been able to receive funds from NHIF because of a very laborious and elaborate process where even the mothers need to have registered themselves with NHIF prior to them coming to hospital. Okay, we'll pick it up from what Dr. Musioke had to say about not receiving funds from NHIF on Linda Mama. So we'll go straight to Linda Mama and I'll ask you, uh, Fredosa, what is Linda Mama all about? Uh, thank you, Masi, for having me today. Maybe just to clarify, Linda Mama is free maternity. It uh, just was branded to be called Linda Mama Poresha Jami. Now, how Linda Mama operates is that you, the mother is supposed to register herself. You can either do that using a short code, which is star 263 hash, or you can visit any of our branches, or you can visit any health facility that is already accredited uh, and contracted by NHIF for them to help you to register. When you use the short code, it's a very short process where you'll be asked what's your name, are you registering using an ID? You can either choose to use English or Kiswahili, depending on what you're comfortable with. So in line, what has really happened is that for every claim that has to be reimbursed by NHIF, there has to be a mother who is registered. The mother can either register themselves, they can go to a facility and register through that facility. They can also visit any of our NHIF offices or even our Huduma, the Huduma centers countrywide. If you visit any of NHIF desks at the Huduma centers, the mother can also register. Mm -hmm. Once she's registered, the cover is not active until she visits a facility whereby pregnancy will be confirmed to activate the cover. Once that is done, when it's time for her to deliver, she just goes to the facility she's chosen and decided this is where I want to deliver. And once the delivery has, has happened, the facility is supposed to now launch a claim with NHIF. So initially what was happening in free maternity, before it transitioned to NHIF, there was not that uh, flexibility. We were not really, they were not forced to register a mother. But now we want to see who is this mother seeking services. Mm -hmm. So we've empowered them. We've, uh, we've tried to sensitize the facilities. We've allowed them to also register mothers. So the platform is open. Okay. 
Dr. Frazier, from free maternity, Linda Mama, it's still the same uh, program. Are we seeing an improvement in maternity, in maternity-related services and maternal and child health in general? I think, um, as you earlier mentioned, when you look at the data and you look at the maternal mortality rate that has reduced over the years, then you would easily say that services have improved. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you look at also the fact that counties and the devolved system has allowed uh, the counties to establish facilities near mothers, then you would assume that mothers are actually accessing services uh, more than they were uh, earlier on. But I think there are still issues that we need to look at. Um, when you look at a national average, you may assume that the national average is representative of the, full, the whole country. Mm -hmm. But we forget that there are counties in this country that have much higher mortal maternal mortality rates mm -hmm and have, you know, uh, services are not of the same quality as in other counties, as well as the knowledge levels among the women mm -hmm. and also the healthcare providers are not as high as in other counties. And so I think there's still a lot more to do mm -hmm. uh, in terms of improving access mm -hmm. to information, the quality of service, mm -hmm. and even when we roll out the Linda Mama uh, product, you know, ensuring that the women in the rural areas and in the marginalized communities are aware of it so that they can actually demand mm. for this service. Mm. But uh, also we need to, you know, look at uh, and uh, looking at the community health workers as a key resource mm. to enhance access to Linda Mama and of course incre increase the knowledge and information among mm. the women. Okay. And um, uh, for Dosa, uh, Dr. Frazier is mentioning that there are still issues that we need to look at. Dr. Musioki was talking about there are still challenges in this transitioning. Are these issues being addressed as we speak, or what is happening so that to make so as to make um, life better for the recipient and also for the service providers? Okay. Um, one thing we have to take note of is that uh, the transition happened in phases. We started with the private and faith-based, which ran from April to around June. Mm -hmm. So we were contracting faith-based and uh, private, bringing them on board to expand the network so that mothers can also access now private and faith-based. Mm -hmm. With the public facilities, especially the county facilities, their transition began in July. I think we're all aware around early August, there was the uh, nurses' strike. That really affected now the transition because most deliveries are done by nurses in most of those facilities. So those were the people who were targeting to sensitize. But around uh, July, as the transitioning was happening, we allowed counties to, trans to give us the deliveries that they had reported so that we can reimburse them back. But uh, beginning August, most of the nurses were not in those facilities, so it became a challenge to sensitize who will be there at, at that time to register a mother. Mm -hmm. Because we have women who are working do, at the time of labor and they mm -hmm. want to deliver. So the nurse will be the person who can register them. Mm -hmm. Now, we have decided to look at it in a different way again and go back and sensitize these county facilities because the strike, I think, ended, if I'm not wrong, around October. November, yeah. Around November. Uh, early November. First week of November. Yes. So we have to go back and sensitize them again on what is required from their end. And that is the plan we have. Uh, I think by late January, we'll mm -hmm. be doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, most of the counties that we've tried to reach, they've picked up. But there are some that we're still having challenges, but we're trying to deal with them mm -hmm. county by county. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You, you mentioned uh, community health worker. She's mentioning nurses. Obviously, uh, the right personnel is key in Linda Mama. From where you are, are the, are the skilled personnel and the required uh, set of skills to make Linda Mama both uh, in terms of providing the financial cover and those that the actual health care service providers, are they being incorporated well in the program? Are they part of the program or is there a disconnect? Um, I think. Uh for a long time, the community health worker was associated with programs related to HIV, 
TB and other uh, donor funded programs. Mm -hmm. And so it's recently, and especially with AMREF, really uh, working hard to ensure that the community health worker is recognized first as a key player in the health sector that actually changes the outcomes of women and children within our communities. Mm -hmm. And so when we partnered with NHIF and became an agent, the key um, strategy that AMREF uh, proposed to NHIF is to use community health workers as the agents that enroll women and their households onto NHIF. Mm -hmm. And so the role of the community health worker in, in the Linda Mama program would be one, they would be able to identify the women within their communities who are pregnant and so encourage them to register and therefore be able to access services. Secondly, we should be able to allow them to even carry out the pregnancy determining test because then this is a basic test that they can actually carry out within the household and refer this mother to a facility near their home. Uh, AMREF uses a mobile app that actually allows a community health worker to register households into NHIF. And so all we would need is for the mother to select a facility and this information would then be accessible to NHIF and the facility that the mother would, would choose to deliver in. So I think there's still more that we can do with the community health workers. But of course, we need to, make, to, to, to recognize that the households or the communities are still very far from the formal health sector. And so the community health worker is the one you know, major uh, personnel within the health system that connects the community to the formal health sector. And so as we train nurses and health facilities, let's remember community health workers play a key role, mm -hmm. especially for the women that we want to target. Mm -hmm. These are the women in marginalized communities and those who are in the rural areas who do not have access to this information. Okay. Uh, Fadosa, is what she's saying happening? Are the community health care workers and this key personnel part of rolling out Linda Mama? Uh, yes, I agree with Dr. Fraser. Community health workers are going to play a key role in Linda Mama. We've had discussions with the Ministry of Health on how to engage now the community health workers. <clears throat> the, currently, what we are looking at first is to sensitize them on what their role will be mm -hmm. on Linda Mama mm -hmm. specifically. Uh, we already have a partnership, as Fraser uh, has mentioned, with the uh, AMREF. That is, as an agent, they are able to use community health workers to enroll members. So we want to ride on that platform and look at how mothers now can be sensitized on Linda Mama. Another key area that uh, community health workers will do will be the antenatal and postnatal. As you're aware, we want to expand it to include antenatal and uh, postnatal. If uh, currently, most mothers do not go for the four visits. Some, most of them would start from the second or third visit, and that's where now the community health workers will play a key role to follow up, encourage women to go for those visits. Um, as Frazier said, they have a platform, and that platform will uh, also come in handy to educate these mothers. Maybe we look at how to sh send them short messages that you're ready for, you're supposed to go for your next visit, so there's so much that community health workers will do. Mm -hmm. And that's already in our plans. So we're just trying to roll out the program in phases. And currently we are finalizing on antenatal and postnatal care. Okay. I know we've talked about registration on Linda Mama and registration into NHIF. And one of the many questions that, or one of the main questions that many people have been asking was, what is the difference between having the regular NHIF card and having the Linda mom being registered under Linda Mama. Is it the same thing or do they, are they different? Or is there at a point where there's a convergence between the two? Currently, uh, Linda Mama only covers the mother and the infant. The child was born after delivery. But with the NHIF cover, it covers a family. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the difference that we have. And then with Linda Mama, it's for a period of one year. We have nine months of pregnancy, and then we have roughly like three months of uh, after pregnancy for the postnatal care. So after one year, it expires. Because currently it's still a managed scheme, but we are looking at proposals to make it an insurance scheme. Because after one year, 
you will still find those mo the mother and child will still be left vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're looking at a way to converge the two so that when a mother goes through Linda Mama, she's able to transition to the NHIF national scheme by paying a small amount. There may be challenges some of them cannot afford. So there is a lot yet to be looked at as we look at how to move to universal health coverage. Okay. And um, so does the mother on a regular NHIF uh, scheme have to register for Linda Mama also? Okay. Currently, if you're paid up and you've paid your monthly sub, uh, contribution, you're, not, you're already registered with us as an NHIF member. But we've, there are those mothers who have paid up but have defaulted a few months. So those ones are allowed to access Linda Mama services. So there are these women who are accessing Linda Mama because uh, they have never registered with NHIF. We also have those who have paid up but because of certain financial difficulties, they have not been able to pay for a few months, they're also allowed to access Linda Mama. Mm, yeah. Okay. Dr. Fraser, we had this discussion about it covering for covering the mother and child for one year, then after that they are almost on their own. Are there any any ways of uh, trying to bridge this? Because we've seen uh, earlier we saw Makueni has its universal health cover for its residents. We have Kakamega, which has an initiative for Afea Mama and Namtoto. And these are just two out of the 47 counties that are looking at what about the bigger picture. And here, Linda Mama, well, it's looking at those uh, women who probably cannot afford to register on NHIF at any one point. So after this one year is over, is there a way, a possibility of probably having these mothers and their newborn babies covered under a scheme or still access health services? I think there is. And when you look at some of the counties, uh, you've mentioned two of them. Another one is like Kipia County that we are working with. And the idea is rather than define the community by virtue of uh, you know, uh, the, the conditions they have at, the, at that time. The county has said every member of their, every citizen in their county must be enrolled on 20 HIF. And so what does that mean? It means that those who can pay need to be identified so that they can pay and encourage, be encouraged to pay. And the community health worker comes in here handy because, for example, you have pastoralists in Laikipia who have many cows. And the idea is this community worker who is one of them can convince them to even sell one to pay for NHIF for their household. And so we have uh, you know, a model that allows those who can pay to pay and pay comfortably from their household because the community health worker will enroll them where they are. And then there's you know, a, a process through which the county is trying to identify those who cannot pay and to what extent. Because then you can have a subsidy program for those who cannot pay. And also encourage those who cannot pay to get to engage in um, uh, activities that would empower them economically so that they can transition out of the subsidy program. And so I think there are many things that county counties and partners can do to be able to ensure that every citizen in Kenya is enrolled on 20 HIF and has access to quality services, including the mothers who transition out of Linda Mama. Mm. Okay. And uh, Fardosa, all this we've been discussing where we have identified some gaps here and there. Why do you think we still ha we have these challenges, yet we have been having the free maternity services uh, introduced for the last five years now, almost five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Initially, uh, with free maternity services, it was only uh, happening in the public facilities, whereby mothers would deliver and uh, the counties would be given an allocation of money against the deliveries that have happened. Mm -hmm. Now, transitioning to NHIF, there's a system that has been put in place. There has to be accountability. So a mother has to be registered 
and she has to go through the process of confirmation of pregnancy and then delivery or if they're going to access antenatal or postnatal care. So as we are transitioning, there is a new system that is there to cater, at least to bring in accountability so that we can see how many mothers are delivering in facilities uh, are they registering? What is happening to this mother? Are they becoming an HIF member? Are they transitioning? Because some of them, after delivery, they're also encouraged now to join NHIF. So we're trying to see how do we move these women also to NHIF. Mm -hmm. And then there was also the challenge that uh, deliveries were happening in the county, <clears throat> in those public facilities, and public facilities were being reimbursed. On this other hand, they could also be claiming for them to be paid. So they could be double payments at that time. And that's why it, there was need to transition it to NHIF mm -hmm. so that we have all these mothers delivering and uh, reimbursements are done from NHIF. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, ladies. We'll take a short break from there. We've been discussing Linda Mama, the transition from free maternity services to Linda Mama. And when we come back from the break, we'll be looking at just how much is being spent on Linda Mama by the counties or by NHIF and the national government. Stay with us. We'll be back after this short break. <laughs> 